So, I'm going to talk about Bluetooth Low Energy 5 PORNG today for fun and jamming and maybe more. So, for those who don't know me, I am a security evangelist and also a senior security researcher at Digital Security, a French uh, IT security company specialized uh, in the um, IoT. And uh, I'm also the main developer of BTLD Jack or Beetle Jack, uh, which is a BLD Swiss Army knife. So, we are going to talk about uh, BLD5 and uh, especially what's new in BLD5 specifications. And uh, we will go through some specific features and also some uh, s some interesting stuff in this uh, in this protocol so uh, first of all i'm going to recap what bd is for those who are not familiar with this protocol so this protocol has been introduced in tw in 2010 as a uh, bluetooth smart so this is the first name of this protocol in bluetooth core specification version 4.0 and it has evolved since then. Uh, version 4.1 in 2013, 4.2 in 2014, version 5 in 2016, and last version 5.1 uh, this year, uh, in, uh, in at the beginning of this year. So it's um, evolving very quickly uh, as a protocol, and uh, it's um, it's designed to 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 be uh, very effective. So people behind this protocol. Produces a lot of uh, produce a lot of uh, ver different versions, but the uh, industry uh, uh, it's difficult for the industry to to keep up with this uh, evolution. This protocol provides some security mechanisms uh, such as pairing, so you can exchange keys between two devices before to to be able to encrypt communications, and this uh, pairing mechanism uh, can be done with a pin code. So this is uh, something uh, very easy. You just exchange a six-digit pin code between two devices, and you derive some keys from this. Also from uh, from out of band data, and also. Uh, Edit some edited curve defilement negotiation. So this is uh, something provided by this protocol, and it's cool. Some version of this pairing uh, are not very secure, uh, as it was demonstrated before, uh, years before, uh, before. But uh, some of them are pretty strong, such as the elliptic curves. This protocol also provides secure connections. So that means you can secure connection between two devices. And this is uh, very interesting because this uh, secure connection, BAD secure connection, is uh, uh, pretty strong with when it's correctly implemented uh, in the uh, in the applications. And this secure connection provides encryption and authentication. That means nobody can tap into an existing connection or even inject some malicious packets in this uh, in, the, in a, a, a specific connections. And last but not least, there is also what we call the channel selection algorithm. So, to make things clear, clear uh, this Bluetooth low energy protocol uses channel hopping to ensure to 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 make these connections uh, reliable. And this channel hopping mechanism is very simple. When two devices create a connection, they are going to jump from one channel to another uh, in order to avoid packet collisions. So, this uh, allows the connection to be uh, steady. You know. Even if there are a lot of devices in the same room, and this channel selection algorithm is not a security mechanism. When it, mm, but when it comes to sniffing, when you are trying to sniff a, a, a BAD connection, this can make this can be an issue because you, for, you, you need to know what this uh, algorithm is and how to recover uh, this uh, hopping sequence in order to follow an existing connection. So this makes sniffing complicated. There are also well known attacks, uh, especially on BD4, uh, which is the first one sniffing. You can easily sniff BD connections, so this is uh, pretty straightforward. Even secure BD connection when the pairing is not so secure. You can also jam an existing connection. This is what uh, I showed last year at DEF CON with BTAD jack. So it's possible to disconnect two devices and once uh, uh, the uh, device is disconnected then it advertises again and you can connect to it and take control of it. But uh, you can also hijack a connection. That means you can force a disconnection from uh, uh, one device to another and then exploit this uh, connection without the other device noticing the disconnection. So it's uh, possible to take complete control over uh, a device this way. So again, um, 
you can do this with a, a lot of different various hardware. So, um, on the left of the screen, there is the Ubertooth, which is a well known device used to, to sniff BLE connections. In the middle, the Adafruit Bluefriend LA sniffer, which is the one of the, f one of the first LA um, Bluetooth low energy sniffer available on the market. Uh, it costs around uh, 40 bucks. And uh, on the right of the screen, there is the uh, the Microbit, which is a, a British broadcasting company uh, s uh, sponsored board developed to or designed to to teach UK students how to code. And BTL Jack uses this last board, this Microbit, to allow attackers to to sniff, jam, and hijack the, um, some connections. Let's go back to the new features introduced in BD5. BD5 introduces a, a, a better throughput up to 2 megabits per second, a better range up to 800 feet or 240 meters, and an improved coexistence. I will go very shortly uh, for this, uh, the first two better throughput, a better range. Basically, it, had, it adds two new files uh, to the uh, Bluetooth low energy protocol. The 2 megabit per second uh, uncoded file that doubles the speed of uh, uh, the, uh, any BID connection, so you can send m more data in the same amount of time. And uh, also the edicoded file, which uh, uh, improves the range uh, times f uh, four times the actual range for BAD4, but you at 125 kilobit per second speed and two times uh, the same range at 500 kilobit per second. So this, this is some kind of trade off you, you will do between range and speed. If you have a look at the packets sent over these uh, two new files, uh, there is the AD coded file, which is the, uh, a new file introduced in BD5, and the, there is another file, the AD uncoded file, which is the actual uh, the BD4 file. And in these packets, you will find uh, an access address, which is a 32 bit value um, identifying a connection between two devices. But the problem is that the hardware we are using, see, um, such as the Microbit or even the Adafruit Bluefriend blue LED sniffer, this hardware cannot cope with these new files. And that's pretty much the issue, the, the issue here. So our hardware may be useful, but for these new files, this can be a problem. So we're going to cover this later. The main point here is that the B85 protocol introduces a new channel selection algorithm. So the old one is mentioned here. This is a, um, a very simple uh, sequence generator based on some modulo. And the new channel selection algorithm introduces a PRNG based random generator, PRNG based channel selection algorithm. So this is based on the random number generator. This is a, a problem for us because uh, as Mike Ryan showed uh, in 2013, it was very easy to recover uh, a very uh, a key value of the first channel selection algorithm, which is the uh, op inc value mentioned in this slide. But with the PRNG, the, the task is uh, much harder because you, you need to break uh, this uh, random number generator to, to be able to, to sniff and hijack and jam an existing connection. Luckily, the devices implementing this channel, channel selection algorithm uh, advertise the, uh, a, a very specific bit, and if this bit is set, the CH cell bit, then this device supports this new channel selection algorithm. So, basically, what are the consequences regarding known attacks on B85? First of all, there is a completely different new hopping pattern used. Uh, so basically, the old version, the first channel selection algorithm, generates a 37 channel sequence, and this new channel selection algorithm generates a 65,536 channel sequence. And basically, the device will loop over the sequence. So this is uh, um, more complicated and our first approach we, we got when we were developing the uh, BAD4 tools uh, couldn't work here. So sniffing new connection is still possible because you only need some software able to, to follow the, this uh, new channel, channel selection algorithm. Because at the beginning of, of a connection you get everything you need to synchronize with this connection and, and follow packets. But 
as an attacker, we won't be able to jam or hijack BAD5 devices because the connection is always de already established and we don't have these values used to, uh, to compute the uh, sequence uh, of channels. The, we need to go uh, to synchronize and follow a connection. So, we also need a new hardware that supports, supports BAD5 new files, but that's uh, another question. It's uh, just like some guys at BTSIG decided to introduce this PNG uh, in order to mess up with the, the actual tools. Well, this is what I believed when I started this, uh, this research. So, let's see. Let's have a look at the random number generator. First of all, it uses a channel identifier value, some kind of value as a seed, which is a 16 bit value. Uh, this uh, random number generator relies on basic operations, some uh, add, multiply, XOR, bit permutation, and so on. And it also uh, uses some uh, channel remapping, but this is what the same with BAD4. This channel identifier value is computed from access address. So uh, this, uh, this is a, the 32 bit value identifying a link between two devices, so basically identifying a connection. And the, the, the computation is the following. You take the um, access address bit 0 to 15 and you XOR this value, 16 bit value with the uh, access address bit 16 to 31. So you get a 60, 16 bit value. And then we are going to use uh, a lot of uh, uh, a computation and uh, a specific routine called MAM for multiply add mod. And basically this routine uh, performs some computations and takes two values A and B, 16 bit values, and produces a 16 bit output. And this is just three times in a row uh, with uh, some other computations in between to create a random number. Based on this random number, then we compute the actual channel for a given counter, a given value of the, of the counter used here. So when this uh, when this uh, channel se selection algorithm generates a sequence, it goes from uh, a counter from 0 to 4K and then generates every possible channel. And this, this creates uh, a, a, a sequence of, uh, of channels and the devices will go over, loop over this sequence. So when I saw this, uh, I was like, uh, whoa, <laughs> what's this stuff? What, what the fuck? And I wasn't alone. I, I found some people on Twitter also complaining about this uh, specification and especially this PRNG. Well, maybe there's something to do. Uh, if you have a, a look at this uh, generator, then you may have noticed that the channel identifier, which is a 16 bit value, is computed from the access address, which is basically public. So we need this to sniff in connection. So this is a non value. And also, the next value uh, is generated from a counter, the next random value generated from a counter. So, not from some kind of internal state that usually PRNG is used to, to, to create uh, another random value. So, since access address is public, then we can go from 32 unknown bits to 16 unknown bits. So, this is uh, quite easy. And this PRNG, well, is it really a PRNG? If you, if you look at the uh, specification, then we know that the channel identifier is constant since it's derived from the access address. And what this uh, function does is that it generates a fixed sequence of 65,000 ish values indexed by a counter. Normally, this counter bears random number generators are used to parallel parallelize. <laughs> Sorry, in French. Uh, this is a very easy excuse, but anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this uh, this uh, generates a fixed sequence of values, and then um, this is very interesting for us for you know leading the attack. But what does function does in fact just monomize some kind of channels, and that's it. So what do we need to break it? If we consider the channel, uh, no. Uh, 
just consider the channel identifier as known, you know, since it's derived from the access address. We are left with a 16 bit uh, unknown value, which is a counter, and if we can figure out where we are in the sequence of uh, this uh, 65,566 values, then we would find out what this counter value is. And once we get this value, it's done. You can synchronize with a connection and then follow a connection and then jam, hijack, and do whatever you want. So, how to get the counter value? As an attacker, we can only monitor uh, some events. Uh, and these events are the following we can determine when the packet is received on a specific channel. And based on this, you can also determine when uh, the time between two packets received on two different channels. So, basically, we can deduce some thing from uh, so some measures we can do on this uh, on a specific connection. If all 37 data channels are used then the uh, channel selection algorithm uses a, a very simple equation or simple computation to to derive the channel for a specific counter. Uh, but if not, if uh, this, uh, if these channels are not all used then this is a more complex. But in fact this uh, it ma doesn't make things more, compli uh, more complicated uh, in, the in this way. But I, I will focus on the first case. Uh, the first case is that we are going to use all the 37 data channels to make si things simpler. My first approach was to uh, use a sieve. Uh, I'm quite sure you, you know about it was the same sieve used to find prime numbers. We are basically doing the same. Our goal is to eliminate every possible candidate in multiple rounds and in the smallest number of rounds to be more precise. The prerequisites here to do this is to be able to, uh, to, is to know the hop interval value which is basically the time between two hops in the uh, hopping mechanism. So, how it works? We are going to consider a counter of zero. So, just say that it's zero. It's a uh, hypothetical. Uh, it's not the real value we are looking for. And we compute uh, channel C0 from this uh, PRNG function with this candidate counter and uh, based on the uh, channel identifier, of course. And we wait for a valid packet. So, we get a packet at time T0 on channel 0 on channel C0. And we do the same on the next channel. So we increase uh, the, the counter with the counter of 1. We compute the next channel and then we wait for a valid packet and we got a packet at time T1. So we then we measure the, the time spent in between. So delta T equals T1 minus T0. And since we know the hop interval, the time between two hops, then we can deduce the number of hops between these two packets. So, by doing this, we can create a pattern that uh, will be very useful to to see the sequence. So basically, by just uh, going through the sequence and looking for a, a specific pattern composed of two channels, channel C0 at uh, uh, say index uh, 200, for instance, and at index 200 plus n, channel C1. By doing this, you will get uh, between 200 and 400 candidate values for this counter. So remember we are, we are looking for the uh, counter used at T0. And we do it, uh, we repeat the operations. We take the first candidate out of the, uh, the remaining candidates and we compute C0, C1. We wait a packet on channel C0, then C1. We deduce the number of hops. And then we apply our sieve again. We are going to filter these, uh, the, all these candidate, candidates and keep only the matching ones. And you do this until one candidate left. And this candidate is the, your, the value of the counter at T0. So, since uh, I had no BLE5 devices at this time, I decided to implement, uh, to simulate this, uh, this attack. So, I will show you the result of this, uh, Simulation. So I uh, wrote my uh, everything in Python, Python 3, and I create this script CSA2 simulate pi. So basically, at the start, there is a, a, a counter randomly generated, which is a 13,600, and I will go through every candidate uh, each round, reducing the number of candidates. So it's here 21, 11, 6, 3, 2. 
until we get uh, a single candidate. And this candidate is 13600, which is in fact the value we are looking for for T0. So that's good. Yeah, I, I love when a plan comes together. The problem here is that we need to know the what this hop interval value is. Uh, I suppose this uh, value was known during my first simulation, but in fact, I don't know this value. So, how to guess this value? Well, it's uh, some basic math you have to do. Since we are going to measure uh, time differences between packets received on various channels, then we can uh, do so. We can compute the GCD, the greatest common divisor of all these measures, and since these, me these times are normally multiples of the value we are looking for. We will get this value. So again, I simulated this uh, this computation. Well, it's uh, very quick, so I have no video for this one. But uh, um, by doing only 10 measures, I was able to recover the op interval. And I performed a lot of tests, and this test showed that um, if you Pair from only five measures, if you compute uh, five measures, then you get an uh, uh, approximative success rate of 95% of success. So this is pretty good. If you, uh, if you get 10 measures, then you are quite sure to get the correct value. But that's cool. So basically, what I got here is that a way to Recover the op interval value and another way to get the uh, counter value, uh, the value of the counter, sorry, uh, at uh, a specific time. So, let's do it in practice with a real device. Uh, there is a problem, in fact, is that this uh, version of the protocol has been released uh, in 2016 and still there is no compatible devices. Uh, in the market, so I wasn't able to find something to buy that implements this uh, this uh, this protocol. So uh, I'm sorry there is there is, uh, there, um, there is no video of a sex toy hack this time or a drone hack. Uh, but anyway, so um, based on my um, first research, uh, I decided to to try to to apply this uh, uh, this attacks on uh, some BAD5 devices. So since there are no de BAD5 devices, I'm going to make some. Uh, I ordered uh, on a uh, on a site on a website on the, on the internet the two development boards from Nordic, uh, which support this uh, new protocol with uh, uh, the correct SDK and the correct stack. And uh, I just program this uh, this uh, board with uh, very basic examples. Um, one making a, a LED blink and providing a, a BAD5 compatible device, and another uh, able to connect to the first one. So basically, two devices that can create a connection in between and transfer data. And I also decided to improve my beta jack tool by. Um, Implementing some uh, some features, new features for B85. So um, BitJack can do the job, but only for the legacy phi, which is the one megabit per second encoded phi. But doesn't matter. My development boards uh, are compatible with this phi, so it's okay. And I modified BitJack to compute this op interval while uh, this uh, this tool was mapping channels because usually when you're uh, attacking uh, an existing BAD connection, you need to know what channels are in use. You remember, I suppose that all 37 channels are used, but this is not always the case. So, by doing this, uh, I modified the, the code to, to be able to, to get this, uh, uh, this, hop, in, this uh, hop interval while mapping, but I faced a, a first problem. Um, th this problem is that normally when you are using CSA number one, the first channel selection algorithm, this is a 37 channel sequence and you loop over this, ch this sequence, but there is no doubles, you know, the, the, uh, each channel only appears once in this sequence. So it's very easy to, Determine this op interval value, and you measure the uh, time spent between two packets received on the same channel, and then you divide it by 37, and it gives you the, the value you want. But this is not the case with this random number generator, since uh, um, a channel can appear twice or maybe more during the sequence. 
So I had to compute automatically the uh, a timeout to be sure that uh, uh, a channel is correctly used. Anyway. And I, I tested this uh, GCD based technique for recovering the open interval and it, it, it works pretty well. In fact, once you smash, uh, when, when, once you solve all the, all the issues based on timeout. So um, this is an example output of uh, what I gave, what I, what I get um, when I uh, um, tried this open interval recovery system on this, uh, this connection. So I got a open interval of 160, which is uh, uh, pretty much it. So that's good. Great success for the first time. But the main part is to be able to recover the counter used uh, at a specific time during the connection. So I implemented this algorithm, the sieve algorithm, and I started trying this, uh, this algorithm. So the first one uh, went pretty well. Uh, I, I went from 65,000 uh, candidates to about 250 candidates, which is, which is what I showed you uh, a few minutes ago. So that was pretty cool. But the next round completely messed up. Uh, I wasn't able to get any data. So I was a bit puzzled. And it turns out that my filter routine took a hell of a time to execute. And it induces a, a delay and I, I get lost in the connection. So uh, this is a, a simple algorithm problem. Uh, so yeah, I was a bit pissed at this time. Uh, so I, I decided to redesign my attack and to solve this problem I moved from a sieve to a pattern machine algorithm which is basically what I was also using. So normally during my sieve attack I perform a measure, uh, I measure and then I, um, I filter all the candidates. This time I'm going to do all the measures in, uh, during uh, the, the first part of the attack and then filter all the candidates just at the end. And by doing this I get a uh, a more complex pattern, but in fact, uh, I'm quite sure to get the correct value. And by doing this, you end up with 10 delta t values, so some times difference between packets received in various channels. And based on this, we look for this hopping pattern in our sequence, and we deduce a counter exactly uh, as we did before. And yeah, that worked. I was able to guess the counter value. Uh, so, I uh, will show, I will show you uh, an example of this uh, later. So, that was pretty cool. So, from this, uh, um, I told myself, yeah, that's good. You get the up interval, you get uh, the counter value. Now, this is easy peasy. Uh, everything you need to, to do is just to synchronize with the existing connection. Well, good. So, I developed my, uh, the firmware in order to, to synchronize with the connection and, um, yeah, there was some kind of issue here. Um, didn't work at all. So I got the uh, correct up interval value, I got the correct uh, counter, but I wasn't able to synchronize. And uh, I looked at my code a bit uh, once more, you know, just to be sure that I didn't fuck it up. And I stumbled upon this part of the code, so this is the filtering routine. What this code does is just going through all the candidates, and filter this uh, this candidate. So uh, this is the second version of the approach. So I, I need to to go through the 65,000 and f uh, and 536 candidates, and it takes a hell of time again. And by doing this, I was just uh, 13 hops away of the correct value at the moment I was trying to synchronize. So by doing this, just adding 13 to the uh, counter value, I was able to synchronize to an existing connection. And that's pretty much it for this, this uh, recovery. But I will show you uh, now a video of uh, everything working with this, uh, this firmware. So uh, for the video uh, purpose of the video, I just provide the channel map and the hop interval value. So as we can see, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, tool is trying to recover the PRNG internal counter, which is the, an unknown value, 16 bit. It takes some time, um, 
generally less than a minute to, to deduce this, uh, this value. So it's pretty cool because uh, if you are trying to attack a, a real life device, uh, you have to be next to near to the device to, to, to attack it. So uh, if it takes uh, less than a minute, it's okay. Should be very short. And once the uh, counter has been recovered, then we capture data sent over these devices. So by doing this, we got the correct value for the hop interval and then we get the correct value for the counter. So that's pretty much it. You, you get a, a way to sniff. Yep, sorry. You get a way to sniff uh, data over a BD5 connection. But remember, it's only on the 1 megabit per second uh, encoded file. And you can also try to jam a connection. So basically, once you you are synchronized with this uh, this connection you can you can inject packets as well and this is what i do, I, I did last year uh, for you know when i was attacking some devices and this can also be done with uh, my b85 devices well it's uh, how to say this is yeah uh something very special because um I got my device on, on the screen here, so I'm going to, to recover the, the pure energy internal counter. And you can see some LEDs uh, normally at the uh, bottom, uh, bottom right of the screen. Uh, this LED, which when uh, it's LED 2 that is uh, uh, lit, then it means the connection is still active. I'm going to jam this uh, this connection and be, be <laughs> pay attention. This is very, this will be very quick. There is a, uh, the, uh, some LED blinking, uh, telling the, the telling us that the connection has been uh, lost and disconnected. So here, uh, uh, I successfully jammed uh, an existing connection, BD5 connection, by using Beetle Jack. Back to the slides. So, um, since uh, everything went smooth with this uh, this attack, I decided to, to release a new version of this tool of BTA Jack, version two, including this uh, all this research I made on this uh, channel selection algorithm number two. So it's uh, it's working, uh, I, but I tested it on a very few devices. I only got two of them, so uh, I don't know what uh, if this tool will work with with any type of devices, BD5 compatible devices. So. Um, I give you the code. I give you the, all the, the tools. Uh, this uh, version of the software has not been published on PIP, uh, just not to mess with uh, the actual version because I, I'm not sure. Uh, since I made a lot of modifications in the firmware, I'm not sure that the, uh, this version may uh, alter the you know the behavior of uh, the actual BTL, BTLD Jack version. So just to make thing, things clear, you can uh, clone this uh, repository and then uh, install uh, the device by using uh, some uh, python auto magic installer uh, python setup pi and that's it so uh, all the code is available open source as usual so to to conclude uh, not so quickly but uh, anyway um what this talk uh, demonstrate is that the B85 CSA number two, so the second channel selection algorithm pure ng is weak um but there is a reason for that. I remember at, f uh, at the beginning of this research, I was uh, just thinking, thinking that uh, this PRNG has been uh, introduced in this version of BAD to piss hackers uh, trying to attack uh, BAD devices. But in fact, uh, after uh, I thought uh, um, uh, I, I, I had some other thought about this uh, this uh, this PRNG, but um, well, it, it's not really a PRNG uh, as it's used here. And of course, 16 bits out of 32 can be easy to guess. And the last 16 bit is a counter, so this is very easy to to recover. But in fact, this PRNG has been designed to improve coexistence. Not security. The goal of uh, the uh, guys who designed this protocol, or this protocol, this uh, channel selection algorithm, and this PRNG uh, in particular, was to improve the coexistence of devices in the same, say, the same space. By doing this, yeah, it works. You can get a lot of BD5 devices, and with this system, you can get a lot more devices that we are used to to have in. Uh, 
with the BAD4 version. And also, the counter based random number generators are easier to implement and consumes far less uh, power and memory. Uh, so, in, uh, uh, in the IoT world, this is something that makes sense. So, um, is it a, a vulnerability? Well, I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think it's a vulnerability, but in fact, it doesn't stop uh, hackers. Uh, to jam or hijack uh, existing connections. Future work will include uh, some, uh, a lot of development for BTAD Jack. Uh, as I said, there are two new files introduced in this uh, BAD5 version, BAD5 uh, protocol, and these uh, new files are supported by a new Nordic system on chip called the uh, NRF 52840. And this, uh, this chip is uh, very interesting because it uh, implements all the uh, files natively. So we don't have to do some, uh, some uh, SDR stuff or, or anything. We can just use the features of this, uh, of this chip to be able to decode and anchor the data packet over the air. So this is uh, quite interesting. But the fact is that it uh, demands a lot of work to port Bitterjack to this new platform because uh, um, both of them uh, are made by Nordic but there are some, some differences in the way these chips handle the BAD protocol. But luckily someone called Marcus Mengs made some research uh, recently on uh, Logitech unifying devices and this this guy this dude made a lot of uh, uh, of code compatible with this chip and i talked with the, with him uh, we exchanged a lot of mails and this uh, this guy has uh, uh, some piece of code ready to use to implement this so uh, I, I think uh, I'm if he if he's kind enough to share with me some uh, some tricks he did on this uh, on this chip i will be able to port Better jack to this uh, new platform and get rid of the micro bit uh, stuff. So, this is uh, this is it. Um, I think uh, I said every almost uh, everything I wanted to say. Um, the resource materials, the, all the notes, scripts I wrote, everything I showed you with the Python scripts is also uh, also available on the on the GitHub repository, which uh, which is the following BAD5 dash with the research on GitHub. So you can get everything uh, I developed and try it. Insert me if the code is uh, you know dirty and uh, and not that clear. But in fact, you can uh, simulate. Uh, Everything the way I did and test it against uh, some, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe some new attacks you are uh, looking for. So, thank you very much for attending this talk, and uh, I hope it was, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs>